Hey guys, Obelisk here. Uh, welcome to another installment of my day out class overview video series. Um, today I'm going to look at the Bard class. Um, now the, the Bard is definitely one of my favorite classes in the game. I think it's a very versatile class. You can do a whole lot of stuff. Um, it's one of the most, most potent classes I think in the game. Um, I guess before I get into it, I want to, I guess, talk about what bards do in fights, maybe in a, a small man or a group setting, generally. Um, bards are there generally for control. Um, and by control, I mean with CC and interrupts and things like that. Uh, bards can also do some healing um, as well, um, secondary heals. Or if you're in a small man, you might be the only healer, so you might be pumping out a lot of heals. But super strong class. Um, let's go ahead and get in the game here. I've got my bard. Um, Fortunate enough to be ranked 12 on my bard, so I have a lot of RA points to uh, to use. But um, I'm going to go ahead and look at each spec line, see what abilities we get in those, uh, and then look at the... We'll probably look at the most um, quote-unquote cookie-cutter spec. Um, it's probably what most bards go, I would imagine. There are other variations to the specs. Um, you can go for higher heals or more potent CC if you want. <clears throat> but I think this is probably the best spec, in my opinion at least. Um, so I'll talk mostly about it. I'll talk about some RA RA needs and some other options RA-wise that you can go for. Um, I'll talk about um, some cool items you can put in templates. Um, I haven't made a bar template um, with the new stuff, so I don't exactly know what you can off what you can really realistically fit in a bar template. But um, I'll talk about some things you can get, and then I'll talk about just some general strategy um, things you can do with bards and fight um, bards and fights. Things you might not have thought of, or things you may you probably already know, but uh, we'll see. Maybe you can learn something. Maybe not. Who knows? Maybe you can teach me something in the comments. Cause I would definitely appreciate it if you can. But uh, let's go ahead and look at least at what spec I am. Because we'll just go through, instead of going through the uh, the slash train ability li list, since I'm already spec'd, generally we'll just go and look at the spells I have. But I'm 44 Nurture, 32 Regrowth, and 37 Music. And that's a pretty pretty balanced spec in my opinion. We'll go ahead and look at music first because I think that's one of the most important lines that bards get. And we'll talk about their CC first here. Um, what you normally think of bards for is probably they're the the main CC class on mid, and they have the AOE, they have the long duration AOE mes. Um, so it's a minute. The yellow version, at least, the level thirty six yellow um, captivate army mes is a minute and one second. It's a um, 1500 range spell, so it's not going to be like Sork Bolt range mez, but it's, it's your standard um, nuke length uh, range spell, and it's a 350 radius. Uh, three second cast time, so it's not super fast cast, it's not super slow cast, it's just your standard cast time. This is kind of, um, this is a pretty dang important spell for bards. You'll be using this quite a bit. Um, it might not be the most... Um, as far as CCing someone, you'll probably want to use a single target mez, and we'll look at that right now. Uh, the reason you'll want to use a single target mez is it's a little bit longer. It's about nine seconds longer. It's a minute and ten seconds. Um, but the reason it's really good, in my opinion, is it's two and a half second cast time. And I feel like you can really tell that difference. You can feel that difference in fights. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm in a duel with my bot here. I'll go ahead and show you the AoE mez, the three second cast time mez. Actually, let me buff myself first with dex. And keep in mind, I'm not at any any particular break point I need to be. I'm in King's Gear with uh, bounty um, bounty jewelry, so I'm not in a, a proper template. But we'll just show you a, a rough gist of the the difference. So this is the AOE mez cast time, and this is the single target mez. Um, it might be hard to tell the difference, but when you're in a fight and you're trying to get a quick spell off, you can definitely tell that difference. Again, we'll look at the single target mez, and then the AOE mez. So it's just a lot faster. It's a little bit longer duration. If you're mezzing like a Det9 Stoicism tank, you're definitely going to want to use that that red single target mez because that, that nine seconds will make a little bit more of a difference. It'll add another second or so to their mez um, after all the debt and stuff supplied in Stoicism. Um, other than that, you get a single target route. Um, it's two and a half second cast time, really good spell, um, a minute 13 duration, 1500 range. Just overall, it's a route. It's great. It's nice to have. Um, you get no Avery root or anything like that, but you'll find yourself using this a lot of the time. And I'll kind of tell you when later when I talk about strategy. Uh, other CCs you get, you get two instant mezzes. One's AOE, one's single target. Uh, they're both relatively low duration. Um, when you think of the, the castable AOE mez, look back, 
it's a minute and one second and 350 radius. When you look at the instant MES, it's only 26 seconds. So it's less than half of the duration and the radius is much smaller. It's 150 radius compared to 350. So that's a, yeah, that's a pretty sizable, when you look at percent wise difference, that's over a 50% smaller radius. Um, so you're not gonna be blanketing a whole group generally with this unless they're super compact and, and packed up together, stacked up together. Um, the other AWE MES you get is, um, it's a level 29, it's actually blue con MES. It's 22 seconds, super low duration. Um, has a chance, higher chance to resist since it's such a low level. Um, but we might buy some master focus layer to kind of help that. But you're, you're going to want to use this um, not to mess someone out for a minute, obviously, because it's only 22 seconds, but just for a quick um, quick way to stop someone. That some, maybe someone's about to mess you. You want to use this to beat them to the mess so you, so you don't get uh, beaten in the CC war. Other than that, that's really the only uh, CC, like hard CC when you, when you think of traditional CCC that bards have. Um, but I'll talk about some of the other really important things in this line. First, we'll start out with DMEZ. I mean, that's just a staple for bards. Um, your buds get mez, just gotta DMEZ them, so cast, use that. It's 1500 range spell, um, just important. Um, another spell they get is a spell called Crescendo. And what this is, is a castable buff. You can use it on yourself or realm mates. Um, it's a 45 second reuse, so it's, it's not like you can spam it on everyone. Um, but it, it is very it is very important because what it, what, what Crescendo does is it raises your in-combat movement speed um, to 130% of your normal run speed. Um, it's unbreakable if you get damaged or it, even if you attack. Um, so it's essentially like a get down version of charge. Um, you can still be CC'd in it. Um, you, it doesn't go through warp or anything like that, but it's a really good way to help your teammate get out of trouble. Like for example, say my say my druid um, is getting hit by a, a BM or sorry a merc or something has a merc stuck to him, I can cash crescendo on him, and he's going to run a whole lot faster now, so he'll he'll get away from that merc pretty easy. Um, like I said, forty five second reuse, last seven seconds, so it's got a pretty decent uptime on it, uh, but you do have to cast it on minstrel and I believe scald. It's instant, so it's a little bit better, but it's still a great spell. Um, other spells they get in this line, you get a water breath. It's just standard group buff, buff, uh, standard group buff gives your whole group 100% water movement. Um, pretty standard ability. Um, one of the one of the really cool spells that bards get in this line, though, that maybe not a lot of people know about what it really does and what you can what you can do with it in fights, is this confuse, uh, befuddling ballad, and we'll cast it on the druid a couple times. You've seen this, it, these little red bubbles above their head, but where this really where this is really important that one, it's a two second cast time. So it's a really fast. So if you need to rub someone really quickly, it's going to be your fastest casting spell. So you might want to, you might want to use that if you're just worried about rubs, if you're not trying to CC them or anything, but where it really gets interesting is when you're fighting a third, just and a third, just starts casting pets on you or your friends confuse. If it lands, uh, will instantly kill that third pet. If it resists, it's not going to do anything, but, so if a Thurg is going crazy and petting up my Druid here, and my Druid has like three Thurg pets on him, I can just confuse each individual Thurg pet, and then they'll all die, freeing up my Druid. Super important. What I'm going to do, I think, is make a video later kind of showing that in action, if I can, against the Thurgist, um, showing you how, how beneficial that can be. It's essentially, it, instead of Bards being just there for interrupts and stuff, you can also pet clear off your teammates, help them out. Um, same with Wardens. Wardens get confused. They can help you out too. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind and I'm going to try to put a link to that new video if I make it somewhere, probably in the comment or sorry, in the uh, description, or I'm going to put a little link to it on here. If I can figure that out, it should be pretty easy, but keep an eye out for that. I'll go way more um, into detail in that video. Now the other two really, really, really good spells I get in this line are the lullabies, um, otherwise known as amnesias or lulls or something like that. You might've heard various names for them. Um, but what these do is first off, I'm just going to give you some of the specs on there. It's a 2000 range instant spell. So it's super long range and it's instant. Um, the lower level one, the gray one, minor lullaby is a five second reuse. And the superior lullaby is going to be a 10 second reuse. The superior lullaby is uh, an AOE, it's, uh, 325 radius and the lower level one single target. Um, 
And this is the one with the five second reuse. Now, why these are so important? One, they're long range spells that are instant. So that's already pretty cool. But two, they're not traditional interrupts in the way you normally think of interrupts. What they do is a reset spell cast. Um, if you've noticed when you're playing the game and someone's pretty far through a spell cast and you, you hit them or you hit them with a DD or an interrupt or something, they can still land that, that spell will still cast if they're far enough along in that cast. Um, which can be annoying, but then they, they have the interrupt timer after that for three, four seconds. What Lullaby does is it instantly cancels that spell, no matter how far they are along in the cast time, but it does not apply the hard interrupt uh, mechanic that hitting someone with a, a weapon or hitting someone with a DD or something applies. It just resets spell cast at any point in time in that spell's um, cast time, uh, which can be really nice if someone's about to land, they're the, literally the last millisecond of landing a, an AOE Mez or a Thurg Pet or something, you can just hit them with that. Um, I'm gonna cast a Druid Pet. And then someone's at the end, and I'm gonna lullaby them, and it's gonna reset that cast time. It's gonna reset, cancel that spell. Um, I'll do it again, oops. Let's see. Oops, I did it a little early there. But you can see it doesn't apply to interrupt, so I can cast directly after that. So, it doesn't apply that hard interrupt, but it temporarily resets your cast time. Uh, where this is super important is when you're fighting uh, anything with a quick cast, really. If you're fighting a Sork, a Thurgis, uh, an SM, that's trying to demez or mez something, when they're quick casting, you, there's no way you can interrupt them other than hard CCing them or using something like Lullaby. Um, they can, you can have a Thurgis get you know a second and a half into his quick cast cast, and then hit him with that lullaby. That's gonna cancel that quick cast. They're still gonna have quick cast up, but that spell's not gonna go off. And since you have two of them, then they'll try to re-quick cast a pet or a mez or something, and then you can hit him with your other lullaby. And then your your gray lullaby is a five second reuse, so you might can hit him with another lullaby, thus like stopping them from quick casting three times, which can be super frustrating um, for someone trying to get out CC or pets or anything like that with quick cast. Um, it's also one of the only things that can stop mocks um, temporarily. Um, if you had a castable spammable amnesia like mentalist, healers, sorcerers, things like that, you can literally hold down amnesia on someone that's mocked and he's not getting a single spell off. However, with bard, you can't spam them, so you can only minorly disrupt them. But if someone's casting a super long uh, cast time spell or their dex quick debuff and they're mocked, you can do a lot of damage with um, lullaby or amnesia. Like I said, it's only one of the ways to kind of temporarily disrupt mock, um, which is master concentration, which makes you uninterruptible for a, a certain period of time. So just keep these in mind. I'll, I might, uh, when I do the video about the confuse, kind of show you the quick cast um, disruption in action. Um, I also want to mention that if these spells resist, if they don't actually land, then they will apply the hard interrupt. They won't reset a cast if they resist. Um, so they're not going to affect a quick cast per se, but they will apply that hard interrupt after, um, which can be very useful. A lot of the times you want this gray amnesia to resist. Say you're just throwing it out um, on a back line because that's the only spell you can you can hit them with because it's 2k range. And if it resists, then great, then that person's erupted. Unless you're trying to stop a quick cast or something like that, then it's kind of, well, oops. Um, but yeah, keep keep those spells in mind. Use them a lot. Uh, these spells are super good. Um, those combined with these uh, two instant DDs that you get allow you to be an interrupt machine, um, and you don't even have to be open. You can you can be third petted and still do a lot of work with Bard. Um, what these what these instant DDs do that I, I mentioned, um, they are 15 second reuse, 1,000 range instant DDs. They don't hit very hard. They hit for 160 on a druid with not a lot of resist, probably with 25 resist. The damage it doesn't matter really, unless you're like a solo bard or something. But for groups, it's all about the interrupt factor. They hard interrupt just like any other normal spell, besides lullaby, obviously. Um, and they're they're 15 second reuse, so they're cyclable. You can kind of you can do a lot with these. Um, so you have kind of you have similar interrupt capabilities as a minstrel with instance. Um, so you can really get in there. Like I said, even if you're petted, you can still do a lot of work on Bard with those two instant lullabies and those two instant nukes. 
and don't be afraid to pull out your weapon. I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit later when I go into more strategy, but even be, being like mailing on a bar, it's not, not a bad thing by any means. Um, so that about covers the whole music line. I don't think I missed anything here. Um, if I did, my bad. Uh, next, we'll go into songs. And you get songs by specking into uh, Nurture. It's not actually a music line. It's a Nurture line. Um, your Clear Horizon, I believe, is baseline. I think they changed that relatively recently, if I'm not mistaken. I can look real quick. Um, just because I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. Huh. Actually, speed might be spec line still. I, th I thought minstrels got baseline. It might be baseline. It might be spec line. Who knows? Uh, you can test it later <laughs> on your time, I suppose. I don't want to respect my bar to zero everything, but um, but I do know uh, endurance, palm, and your uh, your health song are all spec line. Um, but what Clear Horizon does is your standard speed five, um, the highest speed in the game, really, the highest normal speed in the game, I should say, that you can actually keep up, uh, two hundred four percent run speed. It's 2,000 radius is a song. You have to have your harp on to cast it and stays up until you either put your harp away, say you want to pull out your weapon to melee or you cancel it or something. Um, next, you have your endurance regen, seven endurance, um, just your standard, similar to Paladin Shamans. It's a song as well, 2,000 radius. If you put your harp up and you pull out your weapons, it's going to cancel pretty quickly. Um, so keep that in mind if you melee, um, when you get done meleeing, pull back out your harp and recast endurance. It is uninterruptible speed and endurance. All your songs are uninterruptible. So you can be getting hit by something and still put the song up. No big deal. Uh, you get a power regen song, eight power, pretty good. And you get a health regen song. Um, the interesting thing about bards, um, if you, if you haven't played relatively recently is you can keep all of these songs up at the same time. It's not like you have to pick and choose what songs you play. In the in the way, 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 way past, you can only have one song up at a time. So when bards are running around, they'd be running around twisting speed, and then they'd put up endo, and then they'd have to put up speed again. Because they, they do have a duration, so you can keep them you could have kept them both up at once, but now you can keep literally all your songs up. At one point you could only keep two up, which is nice, but now they just said, Hey, play all your songs, no big deal. So it's really nice, really convenient. Uh, that's all for songs. We'll go into the nurture line because there's some uh, some nice things bards get in here. They get your standard base buffs. If you're not familiar with those, those are um, buffs that you can cast on yourself or realm mates, and they uh, increase your dex, constitution, your strength, and your um, your base AF right here. Um, just you'll you'll want to have these on yourself all the time. And if your group needs bases or things like that, you can cast them on them as well. It's just standard base buffs. Um, now, what you get spec line with this is um, number one, you get a spec AF buff, and you're the only class in hip that gets it, so that's pretty strong. You're going to want to give your all your friends um, spec AF. It just increases their AF, um, so use that on your your buddies. Uh, most importantly, I think you get this cadence of concentration spell, and what this does is it gives you um, mesmerization. Um, a, a reduction to mesmerization spells. So if you get mes, uh, it's a 40% reduction. So if you get mes for 100 seconds, instead of the 100 seconds, you get mes for 60 seconds. So it's like a mini form of debt just for mes. A determination is CC reduction. Um, it's an RA that tanks get, if, you, if you're unfamiliar with that. Um, it's a self buff. It lasts for 20 minutes. Always keep it up. It's really good. Um, it allows you, like say you get instant mes by a scald that normally lasts like 20 something seconds. It only lasts, you know, 15 or 14 on you. Um, really good if your demeser is interrupted or if you don't have a demeser, like say in a small mem. Um, it used to be higher value, but they nerfed it um, a few years ago, but still a, a really good spell. Um, other than that, you get your own self strength con buff. So you don't necessarily need to have strength con from a, a bot or a druid or a supremacy pot. The cool thing about this spell is you can't share it. Um, if maybe you didn't know, but any any self buff you cast on yourself, they become unshareable. You're you're too strong to your connection for it to be shared. That goes for base buffs, um, spec buffs. Like if you have spec buffs, like a druid can't be shared of dex quick if they gave themselves dex quick, or little timered buffs like this. And this is a twenty minute duration. Same with things like champion, like self strength con and self dex quick. So I'll, I'll get on my druid here and try to uh, shear strength con. 
Well, I say that, but I'm lagging out. Give me one moment. Hopefully I don't hold D here. Um, yep, there we go. We're back. So I'll try to shear strength con for myself, and you'll see that on my druid, it says your target's connection to their enhancement is too strong for you to remove. On bards, it just resists. So you can't get strength con sheared if, you ha if you're running this. And it, I'm pretty sure it comes close to capping with buff bonus, if not capping. So you only lose a couple con um, versus running like red um, druid strength con. You also get a um, 20 minute duration in four buff. Um, you can use that if you want. This is this stays up even if you have your weapons out, which is nice. Um, like I said earlier, your in song will turn off if you pull out your weapon to melee after a few seconds. Um, however, this will this will maintain. It will stay on for 20 minutes until ever you recast it. However, it is in four instead of in seven. So the value is not as great, but on Bard, all you really need to do is permanently sprint with it. So it's not bad. You can put it up. Um, other than that, you get this little resist buff. And what this is, is um, if you're familiar with champion, champion level resist buffs, it's similar to that. You can just throw it on Realm Mates. You can throw it on yourself. Um, what it does is it gives you eight resist at this level. I believe if you have the red one, it gives you 12 resist to all magic resist. And it lasts for 30 minutes. And I think if you use the curse set, which is a, a new um, new quest set, you have to use three items. Um, and if you have all three items in your template, it increases this by four. So it goes from eight to 12 in value. And I think if you're running the red one, it goes from 12 to 16 in value. So that's nice. And then it becomes permanent actually, or until you die. Um, so that's really useful. Um, so if you don't have a Druid or Warden, you might can use this to give your group some resist. Um, so that's nice. Other than that, that's about it, I believe. You get this little defensive heal buff. It's it's good, I guess. It's nothing game breaking. It's a small value, twenty five percent proc rate, so that's not bad. But it's just to help you against tanks. Tanks will have a twenty five percent chance to proc a defensive heal buff for you and your group. So uh, yeah, just throw that um, when you're using your timers. Just throw that up. Um, not really a big deal. That's gonna be it for uh, nature. Now we can, I believe. I think we covered everything except for regrowth. So we'll go into regrowth. Um, it's a pretty basic line for bards. So you get your baseline, um, or at least I believe their baseline, they might be spec line, but they're so low level. That it doesn't matter. These cure, your cure poison and your cure dot, sorry, your cure disease. Um, so what this will do is if you get disease, it'll cure it for your you or your realm mates, um, 2000 range, quick cast time. Uh, same with Cure Poison, if you're dotted or poisoned by like a stealth or something, you can cast that on yourself or your friends, it'll remove that effect. Um, you also get a Mez in your spec line, it's a 30% uh, health, 10% power uh, res. Um, not instant, has a standard 4 second cast time, just your basic res. Um, now this is where things start to get a little interesting. Um, at least if you look at the past, Bards didn't have a Cure Near Sight. Um, you really need to have a, um, a perfector in your group, like a warden with perfector or a druid with perfector. Or if you wanted to get crazy, you could go perfector on bard. Um, but now bards get it. Uh, the issue with this spell is it's such a long cast time. And I'll, I'll demonstrate here that if you're in a group, you're probably not going to be the one casting this. Your druid or warden with the quick perfector, um, cure, cure near sight, will probably use that. But if you're small man, you're the only cure in your site, go crazy. It's a six, six second cast time, so it is kind of slow. You're probably not going to be the one casting in groups, like I said. But you might have to. Who knows? Um, it's nice to have regardless. Now on to the spec heals that you get. Um, just like most healers, you get a greater heal and a major heal. However, with this particular spec, um, you don't get the next level major heal. So it's a really, really low value major especially when you compare it to the greater you get. Um, the greater heals for about 675, I believe. I'll test it really quick. Let me do some damage to myself from my Druid. And I'll test all three heals. You get a, a major heal, a greater heal, and then a group heal. Um, but your greater heal is definitely gonna be your hardest, hardest impact heal. So the greater is gonna heal for, like I said, I think it's 675. And I have 25% heal bonus in my template, um, so Without RAs and, this, or, and relics, of course, that's the only, that's the highest you'll be able to heal. Okay, so I crit healed there, unfortunately, because I have a little bit of a wild healing in my template or in my RA spec. But I believe it is 675. I'll, I'll just show you just so 
you can uh, see it with your own eyes. All right, let's see. So we'll heal here. Yep, 675 there. We'll test the major heal. I believe it's gonna heal for like 380 or something like that, but we'll see. Um, with all that being said, with the major being, yeah, 381. So it's a little, little over half the value of the greater. But the reason you might wanna still Q bind or have the major on your quick bar is because the power cost is significantly lower. And bards do have some power issues sometimes, especially if you're having to heal a lot, because a lot of bards can't fit a lot of power pull in their template. So if we look at the greater um, heal power cost is 66. And let's look at the major heal power cost, it's 19. So that's a significant, it's a, a third of the power cost, less than a third. So you can you can major you can put out a lot more major heals. Like say you only have like eight percent power, you might want to use major heals at that point, just because you might only get one greater, you might not even get a greater off. Uh, depending on how much power you have. Uh, now, the other spell you have is a group heal. Um, it's a very low value spell, so you're, you're only going to want to use this if you have to heal pets quickly and you can't target them because it will heal pets as well in your group. Uh, or if someone's out of line of sight and you can't get line of sight for a greater or major um, and you have to use a group heal, you have to use this, that's fine. Or if you have to heal multiple people and you have to get all of them, you can't like pick and choose which ones are greater, use this. Um, if you look at power cost, it's a, it's not quite as much as your greater, but it's still pretty high. Um, and we'll see how much it heals for, just so you know. It's really not that much, especially at this low level, because we're unable to get a higher level one because we have to put points into nurture and music. Okay, so let's see. How much does it heal for? Okay, I crit healed there. Let me do some more damage. Sorry, it doesn't show me my base heal when I crit. So... All right, let's see how much we heal for. Okay, crit again. Sorry. <laughs> this wild healing is really, or yeah, wild healing is really paying off, I guess. All right, one, two, three, no heal, or no crit. All right, 263 is how much that heals for. So way, way, way less than your greater and even less than your pretty low major. So you're not gonna wanna, you're not gonna have to cast a spell unless you just really need to. And that about does it for, for spec line abilities. Um, obviously, on Bard, you're probably going to want to go Sojourner just because mainly Force for Zephyr and Phase Shift, super important. Phase Shift allows you to be uh, invulnerable for 10 seconds, um, which is it's invaluable. It's a 15 minute reuse, so it's kind of a high, high, uh, high reuse time ability, but it's, it's huge. Uh, it gives you so much survivability. Um, one thing that people might not know about uh, phase shift is if you phase shift, like I said, you become invulnerable, but you also can't use any spells. You can't do, use any of your instant spells or cast spells. However, phase shift is a cancelable ability. So, for example, you have two tanks on you, right? And they're just doing a lot of damage. And then in order to stay alive, you use phase shift. And once they see that you phase shifted, they're like, well, we can't kill this guy. Let's move on to a different target. And so they get off you. The damage threat's averted at that point. And now you're sitting there running around for the remaining duration of your, your phase shift, which is about 10 seconds, not able to do anything. What you can do is cancel it by shift right clicking. And I'll show you here. So watch, watch my mouse. Um, I'm about to use phase shift. And you see the phase shift icon up here? Just hold shift and right click. And then boom, you're out of phase shift. And now you can, you can cast. So let them hit you. Use phase shift, and once they peel off you, if they do, and you think you're not in trouble anymore, you can cancel it and then be effective again. You don't have to sit through the whole duration. It just requires you to to do a little bit more effort, but it's super useful. And the other ability you get in Sojourn is important is Zephyr. Zephyr just pretty much takes someone out of the fight. You can attack them. You cannot do damage to a, a target in Zephyr. Um, but say you have a BM on you, or sorry, a mercenary on you that just isn't leaving you. Maybe it's going to kill you. Maybe it's just being annoying, interrupting you. You can just turn around and Zephyr it. It's going to float away, and then you'll you'll be free. It lasts about ten seconds. Um, the interesting thing about Zephyr, like I said, you cannot damage people, but you can still CC people in Zephyr. So what you can do if you have uh, maybe like a Paladin on you, Zephyr the Paladin. And then while it's still in the Zephyr, you can still target it, and then you can mez it while it's in Zephyr. And when it comes out of Zephyr, it will be mezzed. Um, so that's pretty useful. You can also root, things like that. You can even apply dots and things like that, but that's um, a little later. It's not really important for, for bards. But um, 
Let's see, if I don't LD here, I'll see if I can Zephyr my bot in a duel. I don't know if that's an ability you can cast in a duel. Let's see. Yeah, you can't Zephyr in duels, sorry. In Realm duels at least, or I'd show you. But yeah, it just makes a player float on. You've probably seen it a thousand times in game if you've been playing recently. Uh, other than that, you get gateways, which allow you to single port or group port. You have a mass gateway and a single target gateway. Your group to your binding point, it's just convenient. Um, you also get, say you... Uh, you're, you're running through um, Elam Von and, and you know at the mile gate that there's going to be a group that put down a bunch of damage traps. What you can do is you can set a ground target. Like say you think at this little this little archway there's going to be a trap and then you can use Reveal Crystal Seed and see if there's anything hidden there. Obviously there's nothing hidden there, but if there is it would show up. And then you could individually target those traps and then use Unmake Crystal Seed and it will kill those traps. Um, if you really want to get crazy, you can make a uh, a ground target macro by typing slash ground set 1500. 1500 is the range. Uh, that's the highest it'll go. And then putting that on your quick bar. And if you can see, it'll just put ground targets 1500 range from you. And you can just run around casting this 1500 range away if you're scared. Um, that's kind of doing a lot. But if you really want to get crazy and you're really worried about traps, use that. Um, that about does it for bard um, abilities other than their rank 5. And if you're familiar with Bard Rank 5, you, you know it's a shapeshift probably, and you've probably seen it before. You probably know what to look out for if you're fighting bards. Um, but let's use it here. So it turned me into a ranger. It's going to shapeshift you into either, I think, a hero. Um, I think it's like a Celt hero. It might be a Furwalk hero. I don't know. It's a hero, um, a Veil Walker, this ranger, and it might be something else. You're going to get one of those options as a shapeshift. And it's pretty unconvincing most of the time, especially this ranger. I mean, you're wearing chain armor. I mean, it's, you're not fooling anyone. But even if you, you don't pe make people think you're a ranger, what you still can do is hide your spell cast with this. Um, so let's let's show. I'm, I'm, I'm going to cast Mez. I'm just going to spam cast Mez on my bot. And you'll see that I'm not actually visibly casting anything. So you can't tell when I'm casting or I'm not. Um, let's see. My... I'm lagging. Give me one second. I've been having a lot of internet issues, so let's hope let's hopefully um, not LD here, and then I'll show you. There we go. We're good now. All right. So I'll just spam cast, and you can see in my chat window that I'm spam casting spells. You can see on my bots um, over his head, he's getting spam mez. Um, but the interesting thing here is you, I'm not casting. You can't see me actually casting. Um, so it might confuse people in fights. It's kind of a mind mind game ability. Um, well, this portion of it is at least. Um, some some strategy behind this is say you're in rank five and someone mezzes you and they call out to the group, hey, bard's mezzed. Well, you're, you're just sat here looking like this and say you get a DMS pretty quickly. If you don't start moving around like this or running around or even just like pivoting here, if you just literally stay exactly where you were, not facing anything, assuming you're, everything's in your frontal arc, you can just sit here and cast all day assuming that they don't realize you're casting because they can't tell that you're casting, so they might think you're still Mez, they don't want to break a Mez, then they have to ask in their team speak or in their event or Discord or whatever, hey, is, is the Bard still Mez? Is the Bard Mez? Like, what's going on? And then they realize, oh, crap, Bard's open. We have to interrupt it once you've gotten a few free cast off, hopefully. Or another thing you can do is um, just use rank 5 and pretend you're Mez. Just don't move. Don't face someone or anything. Just, just look towards them. But don't you know face things to where you're moving around and they're moving and just sit there and, and, and cast away. They might see, well, what's that bar doing? He's sitting there doing nothing. He's not moving in a while. He might be mezzed. I want to be a good player and not break mezzes. So they'll leave you for a few casts. Just like earlier. And they, and they may realize later that, oh, crap, Bart's not mezzed. He's free. He's um, CCing my back line. I interrupt him. Um, actually, this... You may not think it works a lot, but it, it works more often than you think, especially against uncoordinated groups um, or like Zergs and stuff like that. We've been fighting multiple groups um, with like an eight man or something, and I'll, I'll sit there on the side of the fight and I'll just kind of look sort of at the fight, but sort of toward like maybe the right side, just so it looks I'm not really like engaged, um, not like honing in on the healer or anything. But and I'll start just mezzing stuff, seeing stuff, and I won't get erupted for you know a few casts. Uh, just gets you uh, some free space, maybe. The other really good proc on this is a 20% uh, proc rate defensive slow or snare. 
Um, and what this does is say a tank's hitting you, it has a 20% chance of proccing a, a slow on them, uh, which is really strong. Uh, let's let's demo this real quick. I'm gonna have my druid hit me, and I'm just gonna run. And eventually he'll get slowed. This is a 20% proc rate, so it's pretty good. You know, one in every five hits, it should it should proc. So let's see, see how lucky we get. Okay, it actually just well, okay, my, my apologies. My druid is uh, currently root immune because <laughs> I rooted him a second ago, but it's about to fade. This, obviously, this any slows and snares and stuff like that generally don't work on root immune targets. Okay, we're good now. Oh, need to break my speed. Okay. So now druid's not root immune anymore. We'll see. We'll show you this, uh, this rank five snare in action. Okay. There we go. Okay, so you see it propped. Now the interesting thing, if you had like a Merc stuck to you this whole time, then you can turn around and mez it while it's still trying to run to you. While well, I'm still interrupted, but then I turn around and I mez it or resist and then boom, mezzed. Um, the interesting thing about this too, it works on pets as well. So pretend, let's say this is a uh, Templar that some sort has stuck to me. So I'll be running around. Hey, someone peeled the Templar. Hey, we're all repted. Sorry, Bard. No can do. Well, okay. So I'll let it hit me a few times. I'll, I'll be doing stuff. I might be using my instas on something. Uh, I might be using Insamnesia on the third, and then might dink a cleric with one of these DDs. And then, let's see. I'm LDing here, or lagging out, so. Let me hopefully not LD. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So I'm, I'm doing stuff in the fight and being a good bard, and then still have this pet on me. Repting stuff with instant lullabies and instant DDs. And good lord, this thing is not proccing. I'm getting really unlucky here. Well, it says it's a 20% proc rate, and normally I feel like it procs a lot more, <laughs> but maybe my druid is just super, uh, super lucky. But yeah, so this, like I said, okay, so this is a Templar, so I finally get the Templar snared. I finally get freed, nothing else wrecking me. I can turn around and mez it, and boom. Peeled the Templar off me, or whatever pet it is. So it's a good thing to use on... If you get a pet on you that you need to self peel for, or if you get tanks on you that you need to, to get space from. Um, if you want to turn around and mess the tanks when they get off you, if you're still free, that's great. It'll just get you a, a little self peel anyway. So it's really good rank five um, for two reasons. The defensive proc's really good and the shape shift is also really, it can be really confusing to your enemies. Um, so that's it for all the, the abilities I get. Uh, we'll look at some realm abilities. Um, We'll, we'll look at the actives first, because I think the actives are pretty dang important on Bard. That's where you're going to spend most of your points, I think. And let's keep in mind that I'm ranked 12 on my Bard. So what you can afford and what I can afford when it comes to actives are going to be a little differently. But I'll show you, give you goals to shoot for, some reasonable levels within these RAs. It'll be fine um, that you can get at lower ranks too. And like I said, these are my preferences, but... I'll just show you what I like to run, and you can kind of make some some changes if you think you need something else. So we'll start out with a, uh, a super important RA. That's going to be Speed of Sound, um, also known as Sauce, SOS, whatever you want to call it. Um, what that does is it gives your group um, it gives your group increased movement speed. It essentially, gives them speed. However, the uh, the important thing about Speed of Sound is if you get hit while you're in Speed of Sound, it's not going to break your speed. Um, so that's that's really why it's it's useful, and it also makes you CC invulnerable as long as you have speed of sound up. Um, and there's some different ways to use speed of sound. A lot of people use speed of sound just because they want that instant speed. Like say they're they're in a, they're in a pool group, um, for example, and they're fighting some sort of tank group or some sort of push group, and they need to get away to get space to be able to cast on the on the the push group. They can s speed of sound or sauce away to get you know, 1500 range, 2k range, so they can get free and then re-engage. Um, some people use sauce as a way to get away. I know when I'm duoing, we'll use sauce all the time if there's a full group on us, just to, to book it. We're out of there. We don't want to fight. Um, the downfalls of sauce is are that if you're in a speed warp, you're not going to get affected by the movement speed buff of it. You will still have the CC immunity, so that's nice. Um, the other strategy that people use is using speed of sound as a way to initiate a fight on like a push group. If, if you are a push group, sorry. So you'll, you'll, you'll use speed of sound to get in there 
you're mainly using this for the CC immunity because you're probably going to be pushing into a speed warp. So your speed's going to be gone anyway, but you're not going to be mesable. So it's, it's essentially a charge without the, the movement speed. So you can get in there, you can get on your target without getting CC'd out. Um, a lot of hip tank groups will do this. Um, mid tank groups will do it too. It's just a good way to get in there. It's just another alternative use. Alternative use. Um, my bard has speed of sound three, and that's mainly for a duo. I like the longer duration speed of sound. Um, just because it gives you a better chance of getting away from groups that are trying to kill you, 2v8 or whatever they are. Um, and the levels of sauce determine how long it lasts. Like speed of sound one lasts 10 seconds, speed of sound two lasts 20 seconds, three, 30 seconds, and so on and so forth. You probably really only need speed of sound two, unless you're rank 12 and can afford it. Then you can get sauce three and run away for days. Um, the next RA, just going up. Actually, we'll look back, back down at, Actually, let's go. Let's save AM for last because I want to want to talk about that a little bit. Why why I don't buy it, but why I still think it's a decent RA. But as far as RAs that you're gonna need, um, purge definitely. Everyone needs purge. Um, maybe not stoicism debt tanks, even though they still could use purge. But any class that doesn't have stoicism, in my opinion, should get purge. Uh, the level of purge you buy is dependent on you. Um, all purge does when you get past purge two is increases or decreases the cooldown on it. Um, purge 2 is a 15 minute reuse instant purge purge 1 is like a 5 second delay on the purge so I wouldn't really get that I think the instant purge is really nice so at least purge 2 um, a lot of I, I buy purge 3 on most of my group characters just because I like that 10 minute reuse purge 4 is a 7.5 minute reuse and purge 5 is a 5 minute reuse purge um, I'm purge 5 right now because I'm rank 12 and when I'm duoing um CC is super detrimental. I was doing, I think the last duo I played with this was a um, Bard Animist. So the Animist had no demos or anything like that to help me. So I really need as much, Purge pretty much every fight. Um, so I, I invested in, in Purge 5. You don't have to. You can probably get away with Purge 3 or Purge 2, depending on how much cooldown you want. Um, so get Purge, whatever whatever level you want. And then uh, Mastery Concentration, Mach. Super important for Bard. Um, now I'm Mach 5. Definitely isn't necessary. But like I said, I mainly played this thing in small man and duo. Um, so I, I wanted Mach 5. And what Mach does is it allows you to cast uninterruptibly for 30 seconds. Um, however, it decreases the effectiveness of your spells depending on the level of Mach you have. So I think Mach 1, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is like a 25. Yeah, you only have 25% effectiveness on your spells. Um, 35 at Mach 2, 50% um, effectiveness at Mach 3, 60% at Mach 4, and 75% effectiveness at Mach 5. Um, I think in groups, like if you're 8 manning on Bard and you're relatively low rank or middle rank, using Mach 3 is fine. And I'll tell you why, because Mach's going to lower the duration of your, your CC by half if, at Mach 3 and lower your heals by half at Mach 3. In groups, you're probably not going to be the main healer. That's going to be your warden and druid. You'll, you'll, you'll heal a little bit maybe, but it's not going to rely on you. So if you have to mock, your heals being cut in half isn't going to be the end of the world because you have someone else to do it to, to cover your heals. Um, so, and your heals will still, your greater heals is going to heal for about, what, 340 anyway with mock 3. So that's not bad. And your meses are going to be cut in half since you're running mock 3 at 50% effectiveness. Your roots going to be cut in half. Um, and that's a little bit annoying. That's where I, I still like Mach 5 in groups, but if I, if I had to afford, if I couldn't afford it, I'd go Mach 3. Um, but mezzas and groups, they're not going to last full duration generally, just because there are so many ways to get out of mez. One being demez. Um, some people run demez charges in their group or in their, in their template. Like there's the, uh, the astral caster cloak has a, uh, a demez charge that they can use on their, their teammates. Um, so there's just a lot of ways to get out of mezz, and a lot of people have 2D mezzers in their groups, at least. So your mezzers probably aren't going to stick for duration. Um, your roots um, have a less likely chance of getting um, cleared or broken because there's less D roots in the game. Um, and also, it's really easy to accidentally break a mez on something. Like if someone fires the wrong Bane Lord or something, or uses any offensive spell on someone besides like a, a, a stat debuff, it's going to break that mez. Whereas roots, you have to have damage to break the mez. So losing duration on your root hurts a lot more than losing the duration on your mez. Um, but at the end of the day, if you don't have the points for Mach 5, get Mach 3. That's fine. It's, it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, if you're small manning or duoing, 
I think Mach 5 is super important because CC is way more potent and it lasts longer in small man because you're probably not fighting other small mans with two or three D measures. There might only be one D measure. Um, also, if you can CC someone out of the fight for a minute in a small man fight, that's huge. Um, just because if you if you if you're four v four and you mez one person out of a fight for a minute, you're mezzing twenty five percent of their group out of a fight in a four v four. If you just look at um, percentages and how much people contribute to a fight, um, really important. CC is really important, small man. Also, you might be the main healer. Like in our duo, the bard was the only heals in the bard animus duo. So having the bard heal for a lot was important. Um, so it's it's just kind of a uh, you need your spells to actually be more effective in small man, in my opinion. So that's why I liked Mach 5 and, and small man. Uh, the next active RA that I think bards should get, it might not be bought on a lot of bards. It might be kind of underrated, but it's ignore pain. Um, I have IP3. You can definitely get away with IP2. You definitely don't need IP3. Like I said, I'm ranked 12. I have way too many points to put into things, so I just throw them into things like that and get higher levels than I need. Um, so IP, it's just, it's a it's an instant heal for you. A self-instant heal. IP2 is, uh, I think IP2 was what, 35%? 25%? Yeah, 35% of your your, uh, your health. And IP3 is uh, 50%. It's affected by heal bonus, so it's going to heal a lot more than that if you have heal bonus in your template. Uh, that's why IP2 is, is worth it and probably all you really need to go unless you are super high rank. Um, it's useful if your druid or warden interrupted and you just need to heal yourself. You're going to be the target a lot um, as a bard in groups just because you're a pretty high priority target. You're generally up in the front because uh, you're interrupting, you're you're throwing out your instant DDs and stuff like that. You're one of the aggressive frontliners generally on bard. So you will be targeted. So it's nice to have another way to survive. Um, other than that, active RA wise, AM is an interesting one. Now AM is a is a group heal over time. Essentially it does not affect yourself, it does not affect the bard, but it will affect your teammates. Uh, the reason I don't like this, especially in a group setting, is it's just not spiky enough. And a lot of times people die in groups from spike damage. Um, if, you, if you're finding yourself in a group getting whittled down slowly, then AM might be a good pickup for you. Um, the issue I have with AM is I think to get a really good, to get good value out of it, you have to have a high level of it, at least like A13 or so. So you have to, uh, you know, put a lot of points into it. It's a big investment. And it's a 15-minute reuse timer. Things like Speed of Sound, Mock, um, those are 10-minute reuse timers. IP is a 15-minute reuse timer, so that kind of sucks too. But I don't like this because I don't think it just brings enough value um, for the points you have to put into it and for the recast. So I don't always buy that. It's a good RA though. It's not bad, but it's just not my my preference. Um, you can pick it up if you find you need it, if you think it'll help you. Um, it's probably not terrible in small man. It allows you to do other things and heal on Bard, which could be good. Uh, looking at passive abilities, you, you got to buy enough AUG decks to reach a break point. Um, I think the break point on Bards, um, I think most Bards go for the three second break point at uh, 374. Um, some of your spells are two and a half second cast time. And I think the big break point for that is, um, was it 398 or something? But getting 398 decks in a Bard might be difficult. You're going to have to squeeze a lot of decks out of your template um, to get that. Yeah, if you're if you're if you're not um, sure or not familiar with the new templating caps, you can get 127 decks or 127 to any stat in a template. Now, it is difficult to do. It, it can be difficult to do, um, but if you can get 127 decks and you can put all your starting creation um, stats into decks, you can probably get your 398 um, decks dex uh, breakpoint without investing a ton of points into aug decks but you will have to buy some aug decks for sure i think with a proper template i reach uh, 374 decks with dex 5 so you'll probably have to spend close to that um, i can't remember how much my my proper template decks gave me but i think i had that breakpoint with um dex 5 um so get, get your dex breakpoint if you want to go for 398 if you can do it if you want to go for 374 that's fine i ran 374 for a long time for years other passive RAs that you can get is, or you're going to need a Mastery of Focus, I think. Um, and that's because what Mastery of Focus does is it adds uh, levels to your spells uh, to make them resist less. So if you look at your AoE Mez, it's a level 36 spell. So it's going to have a higher resist rate than a higher level spell. And if you're, if you're mezzing a healer and an SM, and that's literally the only cast you get because you're about to get interrupted, 
you want that spell to land on both of them and you don't want it to resist on one because then you're probably erupted and then now that guy's going to be free. Um, so if you have some um, Mastery of Focus, it's going to increase that spell level so it's going to have less of a chance to resist. Uh, we can get things like you're confused, a super low level. If you confuse a third pet and it doesn't land, it's going to do nothing to the third pet. It has to actually land, not resist. Your two instant mezzes are pretty low level, 37 on the AoE and 29 on the single target. So those are going to resist a lot if you don't have some focus. Um, so yeah, just maybe look at getting, I, I go focus three, that gives you nine extra levels. Um, I don't know if going higher than that's really worth it because it starts to get kind of expensive at that point. Um, but if you really want to, if you find yourself not wanting to resist as much, you can always up that. You can maybe lower it, but I like focus three. Other passive RAs, um, in a group, like in an eight-man setting, if you find that you're finding a lot of casters and dying to a lot of casters, AOM is super nice. Um, like I said, this RA spec I'm, I'm, I am right now is a, is a small man, like a duo RA spec, but if I were grouping, I would probably have AOM 7, and I would probably drop things like um, Purge 3. I drop that down to Purge 3 or 4. I drop Sauce down to Sauce 2. I might drop Mock down a little bit. I definitely drop IP down to 2 to raise some points to get maybe AOM 7. And that's going to give you 15% um, secondary magical resist. And Bards, Bards aren't inherently tanky by any means. And like I said earlier, you're going to be the target in a lot of cases, uh, especially against caster groups, I think. they'll If you have to push up to interrupt, you'll probably get targeted a lot. All you really have at that point is Phase Shift which is on 10 minute reuse timer and up once a fight and IP, which is same thing, 15, 15 minute timer and up once a fight. And you know, all it is is a little heal. They can blow through that. AOM gives you passive damage mitigation to casters. Um, and even things like necros, if you find yourself like having a huge problem with pain working necros, that's the melee spec necros. They do cold damage. Even their, their weapons do cold damage. So this will, this will help against like pain working necros as well. It's a super good RA on any frontline class. I get it on all my tanks um, that are frontlining. I'll get it on Bard, things like that. Uh, I think healers can get it. I think I even got it on a pack healer at one point just because I was getting nuked a lot. Um, so AOM is super strong. Um, if you want to help your heals a little bit, you can get wild healing or mastery healing. Wild healing gives you the ability to critical uh, heal, which you'll get some big spike kills. Like You'll get some 9, 000, or 900 to 11, 000, or 1100 sorry, um, heals on your greater if you get the, the, the crit. Um, versus mastery healing, which is a consistent increase on your heals. Um, it's only going to increase it by, you know, this amount. So it's going to be a, a smaller increase than the, the spike big, you know, it's going to heal you for 300 more. I like the spike heals um, just because if I get open once and all I can do is heal my friend once and it crits and heals him for 400 more, 300 more, that's a, that's a pretty big, uh, that's a pretty big heal. And that's going to really help. Um, so I, I usually opt for wild healing on classes like Bard. Um, other than that, you can get a little toughness if you want more survivability. I don't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily put a lot of points into toughness because it's a pretty inefficient way to get survivability in my opinion. But if you, if you want to throw some points into toughness, I guess, but I, I think you have enough to spend elsewhere. Um, I think that's about it for Bard RAs. Um, I'll talk about some template things that you can do. Um, first and foremost, let's look at their harp. Uh, this is the silent harp. It's also you can also get the uh, the Aureolite harp. I think it's the exact same thing. Uh, I think it's called Ancient Drum or something like that. Um, it's viable with Aureolite. Um, what it does is it gives you a a magic secondary magic resist charge, which is really nice. Like I said, especially if you're fighting um, a lot of caster groups, it's, you need a magic charge in your template, and this is an easy way to get one. Um, it also has a, if you know what Egg of Youth is, it's a PBOE instant res. And the interesting thing about this one is a, it's a thousand radius. I don't, I can't remember what Egg of Youth is. Uh, maybe I can check real quick. But this is a thousand radius instant PBOE res. Yeah, okay, Egg is a thousand as well. So they're both the same. Um, so that's a pretty strong uh, deal. Maybe you're, you're erupted, someone needs a, a res, your warden's instant res is down, your druid's PR is down. This is just an easy way to get an instant res off if you're above, over that person. Or you can res you know, a bunch of people in your, your Zerg and keep Siege if you want. Um, other things you might want to put in a bar template. Uh, maybe maybe a melee uh, resist charge. Like I don't have anything in this template because it's a, uh, a King's Gear slash Bounty Point armor template because I, I lent my template out to someone else. 
but maybe a melee resist charge like the um, the otherworldly belt has a melee resist charge. It's a ten percent first tier melee resist um, charge. You can also I, I think that's probably the easiest way to get it. You can get it from like a vigilante belt if you want also, but I think that the otherworldly belt is going to be a good good fit in the bar template. One because it gives you dex over cap if you get the agile otherworldly belt you get the melee charge from it and you get something called conversion which converts damage that you take into power and endurance um, another item i like putting in bar templates or frontline templates if i can fit it is crop tier ring because it has five percent conversion um, if and that combined with the the three percent from the otherworldly belt gives you eight percent conversion and i think maybe one of the barred curse sets has another two percent so you can get 10% conversion pretty easy, I think, on Bard, if you can fit those items into your template. And that's essentially going to give you 10% mitigation on top of everything else. It's just it's just more ways to stay alive. Um, so I think that's those are nice. I always like putting those in my Bard templates. Um, other than that, there's a um, the new Cursed Gloves that you can get, the Chapter 10 reward. Um, there's a version, I think it's Cursed Blood Gloves, if I'm not mistaken. Those have a 25% instant heal on them. It's going to heal as a Bard. It's going to heal you for probably 700. It's a use 700 instant use heal as a as a really as a really potent potent thing. Um, now, if you can't fit that in your template because the stats might not be perfect for Bard, there's a set of gloves. This is one of the cursed gloves with um, heal bonus on them, and what that does it has a use on it that I, I believe it increases your heal bonus by a certain percent for like five minutes or so. So that's actually really good for Bard too. It'll make your heals a lot more potent too when that's up. So if you're small man, instead of healing for um, seven or six seventy five, you might heal for eight hundred with that with that up. So maybe look at that or the cursed blood gloves with that instant heal because I I really like that instant heal and you think I can get it and it's just a, it's another way to stay alive. Um, other than that, you're probably gonna want infernal sleeves or some sort of item with uh, like mythical power regen. Um, infernal sleeves are an easy way to do it. Um, bards go through a lot of power especially in like a small man situation when you have to heal a lot and if you get open on bard you can really tear through some power so having power regen is really helpful um there's another stat that's it's interesting now that you can fit into templates especially bard templates i think because i think the curse set has some of this on it if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong but it's cc mythical cc reduction and that's nice because that stacks on top of your 40 percent mass reduction um and allows you just to, it gives you like a, essentially some, some free uh, determination, which just is CC reduction. It's an RA that tanks get. Um, if you get root on Bard, you have no way of reducing the, the root duration. Um, druids get a cure root, but it might be down. It's a five minute reuse. Then you're stuck there. If your group's pushing or pulling, you might you know get caught or you might not be able to catch up. So having some more CC reduction is always nice on anything. Um, so if you can fit that in your template too, maybe maybe try to get some of that in there. Um, another really nice thing on bards is their loyal cloak. So this, what this is going to do is it's going to give your group crescendo. Your whole entire group, if they're within, I think it's probably two thousand range, but it's going to give you like a a, a a crescendo on crack. So it's a two hundred twenty five percent movement speed crescendo. Let's keep in mind that your speed is only two hundred four. So this is faster than normal bard speed. It's, it's faster than speed six. And it goes to your whole group, and you can attack in it. You can, why is this not delving properly? You can you can melee in it. You can get meleeed in it. You can do whatever you want. Um, it's not going to stop you from getting mezzed or rooted. It's not like a charge or a speed of sound, but it is going to allow you to hit stuff. So if, you're, if your group needs to reposition, they all have stuff on them. You can crescendo, perfect crescendo. That's what the uh, charge is called. Use your cloak crescendo. Get your whole group out of there. Or if your group really wants to stick on something or get in there, you can use it offensively as well. It's a, it's an awesome, awesome ability, awesome cloak charge. This is one of the best in my opinion, and also the the secondary use on it is also really good. What it does is it gives you a uh, one thousand two hundred fifty magic ability that absorbs one hundred percent damage. So if you're getting blown up and you know you're about to be the target and you'll likely die if you don't get some help, you can use this cloak charge, and it's going to give you essentially if you're getting nuked. It's going to give you a free 1,250 hit points. So it's super, super potent, super valuable. So definitely fit this uh, Cloak of the Loyal Bard in your template. This is a must-have item in my opinion for sure. Um, other items that you, you should definitely use, Trader's Dagger. Um, 
I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. I think I did. A lot of the times in fights, you're going to have to melee. And like I said, I'll, I'll get to maybe more strategy later, but just go ahead and know now that a lot of the times bards are going to have to melee, especially if you're pushing and you're fighting an alb group and they throw a, a sort pet or a bunch of third pets or a cat pet on you. You're not going to be able to cast. So you're just going to have to do, you know, make do with what you have and just get in there, use your instant DDs, use your instant lullabies to annoy people, interrupt, and just stick people. Just throw on your trace dagger and start meleeing. It's no one's gonna make fun of you for meleeing on a bard. In fact, when I see bards meleeing, I'm like, that's that's a good bard. He knows what he has to do in certain situations. He knows sometimes you just gotta get in there and melee. Um, and if you use a weapon like Trader's Dagger, I'll, I'll tell you the benefits of Trader's Dagger. It's a 3.5 speed weapon, so it's fast. You you don't have a lot of quickness or melee combat speed in your bar template because obviously you're not tippling that. So using a fast weapon is nice because you're able to swing quicker. Also, this has 5% melee combat speed on it, which is, I think, the most any uh, weapon has on it. So it's going to allow you to swing even faster. And then the proc on it is just really good. It's a pet proc. So you you you, you pet the, say you're fighting a cleric, you pet the cleric, and then now the cleric's not going to be able to heal. See, it's getting attacked by this this pet while it's trying to heal. You can go melee the, uh, the friar now, or the sork or something. So it's just a, a great interrupting weapon. Use that for sure. Um, it should be a staple in every bar template, in my opinion. Um, Trader's Dagger. Don't be afraid to melee at all. Um, other than that, um, I can't think of a lot of necessity items that I think are necessities. Um, I'm probably missing something. Like I said, if I had like an actual template on, I could, I could show you what I had in my temp, but I don't because I have King's Gear on. Um, but yeah, just play around templates. There's dayokutils.com, I think is what's called, dayokutils.com. Um, I think that has a lot of good templates. I think you have to sign up to see them, but check out some templates there. Um, I'm probably going to build a bar template at some point, so if I can share that too um, once I do. Um, it's probably going to have a ROG in it, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so you might not be able to replicate it exactly, but... I'll share it anyway at some point. I also like Cyclops Shield on my side. You can use a shield with a power charge or something if you need another one, but I like having Stealth Lore just because I like killing Stealthers. Um, they annoy me. Usually there's four or five, six, seven of them. I, I died to eight. Literally, actually, it was nine Stealthers earlier in my duo. They just like, it's like a firing squad. There are literally seven Rangers sat there with their little bows out. It just destroyed me. So I like killing Stealthers. So. Um, other than that, I think template wise, I think that's about it. Um, looking, looking at strategy, what you're going to do on bard, let's, let's just, let's just say you're in like a, a hybrid group. You have two tanks, you have three casters, you have a champ, you have a BM, you have a bard, and then you have an element channer or something in the back line, What you're probably going to, you're going to play pretty aggressive on bard. Um, you're not going to fly in there per se and just like go crazy, but you're going to be you're going to be there for interrupts a lot of the time. You're going to be CCing what you can. You're probably not going to worry about like CCing their tanks. Like say you're fighting another hybrid group, their tanks will push in and then your tanks will push in a little bit towards them. And then you'll kind of stay in the middle-ish. You might push in hard. You might not depending on how the, what the fight calls for, but you'll be, you'll be CCing a lot. You'll be um, like, if a Thurg's going crazy, put out pets, you might be clearing pets as they come out and then do your best to interrupt the Thurg. Don't just clear pets. Make sure the pet supply stops. So throw an instant DD on the third and then start clearing his pets as they come out. Um, but you'll probably be interrupting a lot. Um, like I said, you might get petted. So if their cleric's pushed up, you can go right over here and just melee him. And then say a third's over here, you can just throw an instant DD on the third while you melee the cleric. And then swap back to your harp if you're, if you're done meleeing and throw up Endo again. You can do this in combat while you're getting interrupted. It's uninterruptible. And then... Oh crap, I gotta go melee again. So I'd pull up my weapon, hit him a couple times, and then put my heart back on, put endurance again. And then maybe if you want speed, but end's really important if your group's not running in pots. But you're there for interrupts. You're gonna be using your instant DDs a lot to interrupt. You're gonna be using your amnesias a lot to interrupt and your reset quick cast. The big thing for a lot of mind sorks or um, thurgs is to get an ability called concentration, which re resets their quick cast timer. Um, they might be locked down a lot, so they're, they're going to rely on their quick cast to get out spells. You just be as annoying. Anytime you see someone quick casting, just throw an amnesia on them. It's going to piss them off. It's going to it's going to be really good for your group. 
and yeah, it's just it's a good way of uh, of barding. You're gonna want to pretty much I I use my my low reuse timer amnesia, the gray one, pretty much anytime it's up. There's always someone that you can throw it on. Always someone that's gonna be casting. Um, so just use those. Don't be hesitant to use those amnesias. They're they're one of your most important abilities. Um, just throw them out there. Uh, use your DDs to erupt, obviously. Um, be a little more scarce with or sparse with those, just because they are 15 second reuses. And your uh, your AOE 10 second reuse amnesia. Maybe not throw that out every time it's up, but I like throwing out that five second reuse amnesia a lot, just on whatever's casting. Because also it has a good chance of or of resisting, which will then cause a hard interrupt um, if you're not trying to reset a quick cast. Um, other than that, if you're in a tank group um, and you're fighting like a maybe an Alp hybrid group or an Alp caster group. Um, you're going to be the target. They're going to put their pets on a lot of the time. You're going to get third petted. You're not going to have a lot of pet clears, so you are going to have to do a lot of meleeing. Don't be afraid to go super deep if you if you have a tank group and you're pushing really hard. Like you can go pretty deep on a bard, and you can bail yourself out with phase shift if you if you need to. Um, so so do that. Um, I think I mentioned phase shift in this video. I'm sorry if I did, but I'm just going to repeat it because I think it's important. If you phase shift. It's going to make you invulnerable. I think I did. Never mind. So I'm not even going to mention that again. I, I do remember saying it. But um, yeah, so you can go super deep with phase shift and IP and things like that. So don't be afraid to go deep. Um, if you're in a caster group and you're pulling a lot, um, you might be your group's only front line. But in that case, you're not going to want to go deep. You're going to want to like kind of play this awkward like in and out role unless you're getting overrun and you just have to go into melee. That's the only way like your group can survive. But then... You're kind of going to be out of position. You're going to be focused. And if you're the only frontliner, then there's nothing to, to help you interrupt. But just kind of play this this weird line of, you know, throw out a spell and then kite back, throw out a root, see if you can root someone out, and then pull back. If you can root out, like a, if you're pulling hard and the group's pushing hard, and you can root out like something like a friar or like a thurgis or a cleric or anything, any, anything that doesn't have a lot of CC reduction, and if you can force them to keep pulling, that guy's gone. That guy, if that guy's a third, he's useless now if your group pulls. He's, he's going to be rude for a minute and 13 seconds or whatever it is, and he's going to be crawling back to the fight later, you know. Or if it's a cleric and you can pull out of heal range, that's that's wonderful. Um, Sork, you know, if you can CC out anything really, like Sork Cab, that's super strong in a, in a pull group. So you and your druid should be looking for, for key targets to root and then call that root and then pull. And... A good group might not push super hard into you if they realize one of their crucial teammates is rooted, but a lot of people will if they're kind of uncoordinated um, or maybe they're just kind of cocky and think they can deal with it. But it's going to give you a huge advantage. Roots are super important. Mezes, mezes are less important than people think. So if, if, if I mez then pull and it's like a thurg, then their friar or, or sorry, it's just going to demez it real quick and it's going to be out of it. But that root's going to be super potent. Um, there's so much more going on with Bard than I can, I can sum up. Um, if you have questions, if you, if you really want like a, like an in-depth tutorial, I guess I could try to do that. It's going to be hard without seeing actual fights to say, Hey, this is what you should be doing on a bard. Um, but just know you can do so much. You can, you can CC the hell out of a group. You can interrupt the hell out of a group. You can even keep your group alive with heals. Um, bards, one of my favorite classes, so much you can do such a fun class. Give it a go. Um, if you have any questions about it, um, let me know if, if I missed anything, it's definitely important. Put put it down in the comments and I'll, I'll try to add a little amendment in the description or something. Um, I'm going to try to put out that confusion video later. Um, we'll see. I'll have to find a third friend to help me, but keep an eye out for that. Um, and enjoy it. And like I said, any tips, suggestions, anything you want me to, to do, let me know. Um, thanks for watching again. That's been the Bard class for Hibernia. Thanks guys.